Uh, joining us from the sidelines of the IFL annual conference, uh, H. Name Kumar from IFL Securities. Uh, here's his conversation with Nikunj. Actually, uh, we have a, a record participation at uh, this year's conference. So there's obviously a, a lot of uh, interest. And uh, this year's theme is also Finding Alpha. Uh, just to give you a, a backdrop as to why we chose this theme, last year, if you look at uh, BSE 500, it generated a return of about 10%. Uh, and there were 80 stocks which generated a return of uh, over 50%. So the alpha that can be generated by owning the right stocks uh, within this market and uh, into a period where the economy was slowing down has been uh, pretty staggering and pretty significant. So uh, therefore, we have got uh, about 125 companies, senior managements presenting to investors. And uh, there is a lot of enthusiasm to meet uh, companies. Uh, as you would uh, be aware, uh, there are a lot of uh, new sectors uh, uh, and new companies that have got listed in the last two years. Uh, AMCs, life insurance, general insurance, uh, fine and specialty chemical companies, SFBs, etc., etc. This was a segment of the economy which was not available for investment up until two years ago. And uh, in the last 12 months, these sectors have seen a significant re-rating. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of interest to meet these companies and uh, uh, get to know them uh, better because some of them have a listing history of less than 12 months. So that is where uh, we are. I would say because of this uh, virus care, there is some bit of caution, uh, particularly uh, in Asia, understandably so. But, uh, you know, this too shall pass. I remember the days when SARS was there, when there was so much care for a period of about five to six months. And things started to slowly uh, change for the better. In fact, markets uh, had hit a bottom then. Of course, you know, the valuation comparables are very different as compared to where we are today vis-a-vis -vis 2002. Uh, but uh, still, I think that uh, there is a general belief uh, that uh, this too shall pass. And, uh, you know, uh, Particularly, I think if you look at uh, U.S. corporate earnings have been pretty good. In general, uh, you know, uh, in other parts of Asia also, earnings have been reasonably good. In India, of course, it's been buoyed up by uh, your corporate tax rate cut, uh, in fact, but for which uh, probably we would have had uh, negligible earnings growth, growth this year. But still, I mean, that is what matters to investors. So, uh, I mean, there is a lot of enthusiasm. Hey, Given that coronavirus will have an impact on the Chinese economy, in the short term, what it means for emerging market flows? And on the margin, do you think India will only benefit? It may be unfortunate, but uh, it's true. So, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, there is no doubt that uh, if this persists for some more time, then uh, emerging market flows will uh, definitely get impacted uh, given the large weightage of China uh, in all these uh, indices. At this point in time, uh, there is generally, uh, you know, the mood is still risk on. And uh, as I said before, there is a belief that uh, this uh, will... Uh, uh, so the virus care will speak out soon and uh, things will start to improve uh, from uh, here on. Let's see, we'll have to watch closely. But one thing is for sure, actually, uh, this is definitely having a big negative drag on impact on commodity prices. And, uh, you know, as you would have noticed across the board, all commodities, given, uh, you know, China's consumption of these uh, ranging between 30 to 50 percent of global consumption, uh, you know, we have seen a big correction. Uh, commodity prices may remain soft for some more time to come, uh, which is also good news uh, for uh, India. I think uh, if India uh, really capitalizes on this opportunity, the Make in India program can see a big acceleration. Uh, global companies are desperate 
to diversify the sources of supply and uh, you know india is at a vantage point and uh, we have seen uh, countries like vietnam take big advantage uh, in uh, electronics manufacturing for example where samsung has made uh, very big investments and employs now over 100000 people there india actually uh, can take advantage of this now how uh, quickly the policy makers move uh, to address uh, some of the issues uh, that uh, companies face when they uh, set up operations in india uh, will be uh, uh, a key uh, thing to watch out for uh, i'm hopeful that uh, you know india will actually uh, get its act together and uh, hopefully you know get uh, some of these um, uh, companies to come to india and set up manufacturing operations name uh... I'll take the clock back and talk about the slowdown. Uh, what we saw in 2019 was not a conventional slowdown. It was a perhaps a man-made slowdown, which largely happened because of liquidity. Now that liquidity is back in the system, and Reserve Bank of India is maintaining that there is enough and more liquidity, how come things are not improving? What we've seen is very gradual recovery, and that gradual recovery is not impressive enough. nikunj actually the genesis of the slowdown was actually the faulty rollout of gst and liquidity uh, actually tightness just aggravated the slowdown and uh, you know just to step back uh, uh, you know my discussion with uh, a number of gst experts suggest that there are a host of issues that uh, uh, that need to be fixed they have kept uh, almost half uh, of the consumables outside the gst net and therefore they have been forced to have very high tax rates and even within a single category they have multiple rates the law is too complex and cumbersome uh, you would have seen uh, initially registrations went up then filings have started to come down and this is because it's too difficult to comply with uh, tax compliance has improved but it has not improved to the extent to which uh, you know uh, the government thought uh, it would happen and uh, you know uh, because of all of this uh, you know there is uh, we are seeing a big slowdown now for example rates being too high has had a big negative impact on consum on uh, uh, sale of automobiles Uh, you know by no yardstick of imagination a buyer of a two wheeler or a buyer of a alto car can consider to be rich but we have the highest uh, gst slab on these uh, items so i would say that uh, liquidity coming back into the system plus i think uh, the uh, very uh, progressive measures that rbi announced in the recent credit policy is uh, are definitely going to help uh, on the margin but and uh, you know if india were to revert back to uh, 7% kind of growth for that to happen i think uh, the deficiencies in gst will need to be fixed it's a complex issue it has to go via the gst council but uh, you know as we have seen in the past reforms uh, that india has initiated uh, you know these things are happen over a period in time so we've hit the rock bottom in terms of growth incrementally growth is going to uh, get better from here there is no doubt about it but are we going back to the heady days of uh, 7 to 8% growth the answer is no because till such time you don't fix gst then uh, that is not going to happen now your uh, point about liquidity is absolutely valid i think that uh, uh, i personally think that in the next 3 uh, uh uh to 6 months we should see credit spreads uh, actually uh, come off and uh, liquidity for uh, even double a and single a rated nbfcs to improve and uh, deposit rates to come off so uh, real rates uh, also coming off on the margin is going to definitely help all of this are uh, will aid uh, you know uh, growth but uh, you know the, the structural issues uh, that are uh, that have risen because of gst uh, you know need to be fixed for uh, growth to come back on a more sustainable basis okay uh, i like to draw your attention to the financial space currently financials which includes banks uh, and nbfcs they account for nearly uh, 40% weightage on the nifty and historically when a sector reaches 
to 35 to 40 percent weightage of the Nifty, it always coincides with the market peak. Exactly 10 years ago, financials had a sub 30 percent weightage on the Nifty. Are you worried about this mega concentration which has now happened in uh, one or two NBFCs and four of three or four private banks? You know, the uh, thing is that even within financials, what we notice is that a lot of new sectors are getting listed. So you have insurance now getting listed, life, all the three companies are very large companies. Now LICs uh, will get listed in the next 12 months. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, AMCs have got listed, SFBs have got listed. So the list has actually become very, very wide. Now, if you include all of this in financials, I have my own doubts whether the weightage of uh, uh, this segment will come down. Also, you know, you step back and look at why investors are actually piling on to some of these names. The reality is that the broader economy is slowing down. Uh, there is no clarity in terms of how uh, consumption, uh, uh, you know, uh, how investment cycle is going to pick up. And uh, even consumption is actually concentrated in a few areas. So what has happened is that the choice for the investors have become very narrow. Uh, you know, I'll talk about three overarching themes that we are seeing in investment and how it plays into, uh, you know, the issue of uh, weightage of financials as well. One is that globally ESG has become a, a big issue uh, and uh, a lot of uh, investors, in fact I did a poll uh, in Hong Kong, uh, out of the 36 investors I met, uh, about 85% of them said that they can't invest in cigarette stocks, coal stocks and uh, uh, select oil upstream oil stocks. We are seeing this trend happen due to which, uh, you know, liquidity can't flow into uh, uh, sectors uh, which are uh, uh, not compliant with the ESG uh, theme. In fact, one of the investors told me that uh, for every investment that they make, they have to answer 98 questions on uh, ESG. And so there is reluctance to invest in this sector. Second is that uh, commodities, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of investors, particularly the foreign investor, don't invest in commodity uh, sectors in India because they are coming to fund, uh, find uh, stories to play on the domestic growth. Uh, so a lot of commodity companies that are listed are out. A lot of PSU companies have uh, become uninvestable because of the fact that uh, their terminal growth rates have got impacted or they are part of the ESG uh, because power utilities, for example, thermal power utilities uh, or coal manufacturing companies are also, you know, uh, negatively impacted because of uh, e ESG. So the uh, uh, if you exclude all these companies and then you look at the weightage of financials in the overall investment theme, you will be able to appreciate as to why the weightage is so large. So uh, the short answer to your question is that I don't see this coming down. Every decade, we've seen emergence of new sectors. You know, like we say in the market that uh, the course remains the same, the horses, they change. Uh, if private banks and a clutch of consumer uh, staples and consumer discretionary stocks have done very well for the decade gone by, whom do you think or who, which themes do you think will dominate this decade? And when I say this decade, we cannot predict stocks. But what we can try and analyze name perhaps on this forum is try and understand that what could be the high growth earning sector for next four to five years. I would categorize uh, chemicals, which I would say that, uh, uh, you know, has done well. But when you look at multi-year themes, uh, you know, these can do very, very well. What we saw in pharmaceutical sector between uh, 1995 to 2015, we are likely to see in chemicals and within chemicals you have a company scattering to different categories of uh, chemicals, uh, insurance, uh, life and general, uh, AMCs, uh, select SFBs. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, some of the private banks will continue to do well considering the fact that uh, the public sector will continue to lose market share. I, I personally think that the tailwind is still there at least uh, for the next three, four years or so. 
and uh, probably you know uh, growth rates will start to slow if once uh, the private banks gain another 10 12 percent market share uh, in the overall pie as such after that it will become incrementally difficult but as i said before you know there are newer lot of new sectors that are getting uh, listed uh, and uh, uh, some of these will actually drive big value creation over the next uh, uh, you know 10 years i would include retail as well uh, in this uh, 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 this one p in this theme under this theme uh, i would also say that uh, if you look at sectors like telecom you've seen a big uh, drop uh, you know uh, i mean big value destruction in the last uh, 10 years and uh, as we see things today uh, the next 5 years the, for the companies that uh, survive and stay put are actually you know could uh, uh, emerge as uh, a reasonable wealth creators uh, you know bill gates once famously said that we overestimate the impact of disruption in the short term and underestimate in the long term. If I have to apply that to autos, do you think markets are getting extra, too much and perhaps paranoid also about what EVs could do to Indian companies in the short term? I think so. I agree with you. I think uh, uh, that seems to be the case. Maybe, you know, three, six, nine months down the road, Actually, if you step back, uh, Nikun, there's one more issue. People are also worried about, uh, uh, you know, BS6, uh, you know, price increases, how it will impact demand, etc., etc. Uh, one of the large auto company CEOs to whom I was speaking to was telling me that uh, uh, the best thing is that you wait it out till June. Uh, you'll have a completely new price list, new set of vehicles on the road. Uh, people will view this sector afresh and uh, he was extremely bullish that uh, uh, come June, uh, actually July onwards, you will start to see a demand acceleration. Now, I therefore think that there is a pent up demand uh, given what has happened in the last 18, 24 months. In some cases, we have seen very steep decline, uh, year on year decline in volumes and uh, therefore it is definitely going to come back. I honestly don't know how this will pan out over the next uh, 10 years, but all I can see is that uh, in the next uh, two to three years, I think uh, the pessimism will be uh, proven to be uh, unfounded. You like insurance, but some would argue that within the insurance sp space, A, valuations are rich, B, uh, could there be an overhang because of supply in the insurance sector? Because what we understand is that as per the new norms, the holding of uh, uh, the holding by promoters or groups in this case has to be weighed down in next couple of years. Given, I mean, I'm a fundamental analyst and I actually uh, uh, not necessarily get worried about uh, this technical overhang because uh, we've seen in uh, a lot of stocks uh, that uh, it just goes the other way around. The most recent example is DMART. I mean, two months ago, people were talking about large supply. Look at where the stock is. What matters is uh, what the fundamentals are, what the growth delivery potential is, what the expectations are, and how do they meet these expectations, whether they meet these expectations or whether they overwhelm the expectations. All that matters. In India, I think uh, good quality stocks have been expensive for a long period in time. And if you had looked at HDFC Bank uh, in uh, 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, all points in time, uh, it was it was uh, uh, one of the most expensive banks in the world. But has it not created value? It has created value, number one. Number two is that uh, when a sector has multiple listings, sell side coverage improves, buy side interest improves, index inclusion happens, passive funds are becoming bigger and bigger. You know, one of the other overarching theme of investment is actually ETFs. Last year, 37% of the flows into domestic funds came from ETFs. And uh, uh, today, uh, foreign plus domestic ETFs have about $70 billion invested uh, in various indices, uh, MSCI, uh, FTSE, uh, uh, Nifty, and Sensex. 
so therefore uh, you know uh, you know people always get worried about uh, you know supply coming through i think uh, i am more uh, i look at the fundamentals and their ability to deliver growth if these companies have the potential to deliver 20 to 25% earnings growth over the next decade which i think they have the potential to then these stocks will uh, deliver returns fantastic i mean better than market returns for sure uh, over this cycle uh, regardless of the supply